Hello friends. This is the Ani Fanfix. How are you all? So we are back with an amazing movie on, What if Naruto's was the son of Medusa? Here's a summary. What if Kashina was a witch? And just any witch, but one of the Gorgon sisters. Good Medusa and Arachne and Krona is a girl. Rated M for safety, follows the manga, but Arachne still lives and Medusa got a new body. Konoha bashing. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin. The Forest of Death. Orochimaru had Naruto in a hold. Then his fingers lit up. Gogyo Fuin, he yelled as he slammed his hand into Naruto's stomach. Then Naruto passed out. Naruto's Mindscape. The Kayubi began to feel the effects of the seal. Then it began to change. The giant fox just turned into a girl. She had long red hair, full D cup breasts, a firm ass, and she was wearing a red kimono. She also had fox ears on her head and nine red tails waving behind her. This damn seal. She hissed. It prevents me from interfering with the one that Snake used, she said. She then noticed a few symbols appear in the mindscape. First a spider appeared, then a snake, and last the kanji for blood and a dragon. When she saw them, her eyes widened. How is that possible? She said. Wait, the kid's last name is Uzumaki, she said. That means he is Kashina's son, she realized. She then gained a smile on her face. It seems Kashina Uzumaki Gorgon had an heir after all, she said. Good luck, Kit, she said. Let's see how the world handles the real you, she said. Outside. When Naruto woke up, he saw Sasuke, with black marks all over his body, was about to kill one of the sound nin, namely the girl. Moving at speeds the others couldn't follow, he appeared between Sasuke and the girl. Stop it, Uchiha, he said in a cold tone of voice. Sasuke just smirked. And what if I don't? he said. He never got the answer, as Naruto knocked him out with a punch in the gut, the marks on his body receding. He then turned towards the girl. Leave your scroll and go. He said. The boy with the bandages just placed the scroll on the ground and took his fallen teammate, and he and the girl left. Naruto then turned to the rest. Sakura, he said. Take the Uchiha and let's go the tower. He said, leaving no room for argument. Sakura just nodded and they left. Ino and the rest just stared in disbelief. What just happened? She asked. Nobody answered. Troublesome. Shikamaru said simply. At the tower and the beginning of the exam, the Hokage looked at everyone that passed. He then began his speech. During the speech he saw Naruto walk away. Then the fights began. I'm gonna skip them and go right to Naruto's fight. The next match is Kiba Inazuka versus Naruto Uzumaki. Hayate said. Kiba jumped down. This is gonna be easy, Akamaru. He said. We have to fight the dead last. Akamaru just barked. Sorry Kakashi, but your student can't win against Kiba. Kurenai said. If it were before the exams, I would agree with you. Kakashi said. But after what I heard from Sakura, I'm not so sure, he said. After a few minutes Naruto still didn't show up. Then they heard a noise coming from behind the door. The door was kicked open and Naruto walked in. Everyone was shocked at his new outfit. Instead of that orange abomination, he now wore black, metal-plated, combat boots, a black, short-sleeved shirt, black cargo pants, black fingerless gloves with metal studs on the knuckles and a sleeveless gray jacket, a body warmer, with the kanji for blood on his the back. The most notable difference, however, was his hair. Instead of short, spiky, blonde hair, he now had smooth red hair that reached halfway past his back and looked like pure silk. If it wasn't for his blue eyes and whisker marks, they wouldn't have recognized him. Then Kiba opened his big mouth. You think a little change in clothes and hair will help you win? He mocked. You're still the dead least, remember that, he said. Naruto just looked bored. Can we begin? He said. I have other things to do today than listen to this mutt, he said. Hayate coughed and raised his hand. Hajime, he said as he jumped away. Kiba activated his clan technique and charged at Naruto, making a few swipes at Naruto, who just dodged them all. When Kiba saw that it didn't work, he called Akamaru over. He then made a hand sign. Man Beast Clone, he yelled, as Akamaru transformed into a second Kiba. They then dashed towards Naruto. Fang piercing Fang, he yelled. They then turned into two miniature cyclones. When they came close Naruto just disappeared. This made Kiba and Akamaru stop. They looked around, 
but they couldn't find Naruto. They then heard a chuckle coming from behind them. When they turned around, they saw Naruto standing there with his arm cocked back and his palm open. This ends now, he said with a smirk. Bloody spear, he yelled as he thrust his palm forward. Blood erupted from his palm and turned into a spear, which fired at Kiba while still being connected to Naruto's hand. Not being able to dodge, he took the attack head on. It pierced through his side, which erupted in a small fountain of blood. Ah! Kiba yelled. He then fell to the ground. The blood then returned to Naruto's hand and the wound was sealed shut. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki, Hayate said, as the medics picked up Kiba. Naruto just shrugged and turned to leave the arena. Where are you going? Hayate asked. Leaving, Naruto said. But don't you want to know who faces you in the finals? Hayate asked. Naruto just shook his head. Don't you want to see the matches of your friends? Hayate asked. These aren't my friends and I couldn't care less if one of them died. Naruto said coldly, before he left in a swirl of blood, creeping a few popal out. The other rookies were shocked. Naruto didn't see them as friends, didn't even care if one of them died. Hanada took it the hardest. When it was time for her match with Neji, she was a nervous wreck and forfeited the match instantly. Naruto will pay for this. Kurenai thought. When the matches were made, Naruto would face Neji. What nobody noticed was that, in the shadows of the room were a black snake and a large black spider, who disappeared as soon as Naruto left. At a different location, three figures were standing in the middle of a dark room. It seems our nephew has awoken. One of them said as the light flickered on. When the light was on, the three figures were revealed. One was a woman with a fairly average physical build, and a large, black, dotted snake tattoo winding down either arm. Her facial features consisted of eyes containing yellow irises with black pupils, and blonde hair arranged in a spiked style, with two long strands extending downwards framing either side of her face, that entwined each other like a caduceus snake to rest upon her chest. She was wearing a black body length suit with hood, which extended downwards to her knees. The hood itself was adorned with an eye like marking upon either side, which, interestingly, when worn in addition to the shape of her hair, gave it the appearance of a snake's mouth, with teeth and fangs. She also had a tail which was shaped like an arrow. She was barefooted, with unique toenail and fingernail polish that is black, featuring yellow arrows pointing upwards. The other was a woman with an extremely pale and flawless complexion making it appear like she's almost constructed entirely out of porcelain. She had a thin figure and very huge breasts. Her facial features comprised of long dark black hair, worn in an upwards manner with two long strands that framed either side of her face, and eyes that had both completely grey irises and pupils, each containing a black spider web pattern. Her clothing consisted simply of a long black sleeveless dress. However, this dress was incredibly long, in that it completely concealed her feet, while ending in eight small trailing pieces of fabric. A narrow black band encircled her neck featuring a small spider emblem, that lied at its front, and eight extensions that protruded outwards upon the back, with four emerging from either side. Spider web netting branched the gap between the band and the dress, extending downwards from the aforementioned spider emblem. Two large, sleeves, separated entirely from the dress, were worn on her arms, ending just after her elbows. Each of these sleeves also displayed four protrusions, appearing at the ends of the significant amount of overhanging fabric. She also wore two spider earrings that hung downwards from her ears. The last one was a girl with an androgynous appearance, with a thin body, monotone expression, pink hair, and tall stature. Her hair was quite short, with several long, large clumps sticking out in several places. The bangs were straight cut and ended above the eyebrows, but did not stay very uniform. Two long pieces of hair extended from the bangs and hung low over her face. She wore a long black old style robe that ended at the mid calf level on his, her legs. The robe was completed with large white cuff links at the ends of each sleeve and a tall white button up collar at the neck. She also wore black slipper like shoes with a tall white cuff protruding out of the top. Is that my cousin? The girl asked in a shaky voice, trying to hide the blush she had on her face. Yes, he is, Krona. The woman with blonde hair said, He is cute, isn't he? She teased the girl, who now blushed bright red. Stop teasing Krona, Medusa. The woman with black hair said to the blonde haired woman. Yeah, yeah, Arachne. Medusa said to the woman. Besides, Medusa said, I shouldn't really talk, because I can grow to like him as well, especially with his brutality. 
she said, blushing a bit herself. I can understand that, Arachne said with a smile. They then disappeared from the room and went to Konoha. In Konoha, Naruto was walking through the village, just having visited the library. He was walking around quite peacefully, until a mob of villagers and shinobi stood in his way. What do you want? He asked in a bored tone of voice. We want you dead, demon. One of them yelled, as he ran at Naruto with a kanai. He would have succeeded, if Naruto didn't throw a kanai just between his eyes, killing him instantly. This was met with a lot of shocked faces. The kid never fought back. I'm done being your punching bag. Naruto said coldly while he began making hand signs. I just read about this one in the library, but to hell with that, he said. Wind release. Beast tearing palm. He yelled as he swiped his hand and sent a large wave of chakra at the mob. Most of the shinobi managed to dodge it, but those that didn't were sliced apart by the wave. The shinobi then looked at Naruto, who was making even more hand signs, before releasing even more waves. The shinobi tried to dodge, but the waves were too numerous and Naruto showed no signs of tiring, because of his immense reserves. When the entire mob was killed, three popals showed up. Namely Medusa, Krona and Arachne. Well, well, well. Medusa said. If I thought you were brutal before, I am absolutely sure of it now. She said. Naruto just looked at them. Not to be rude but who are you? He asked. How rude of us? Medusa said. My name is Medusa Gorgon. She said. The girl hiding behind me is my daughter Krona, and the woman besides me is my sister Arachne. She said. Me and Arachne are your mother's sisters. She said. At this little bit Naruto's eyes widened. Before we talk about anything, he said. Did the Hokage know about this? He asked. He is supposed to, so yes. Arachne answered. Then all hell broke loose. If I get my hands on the old man, I'm gonna make sure he would wish he was dead. He yelled in a demonic voice, unleashing wave after wave of ki and sending several more waves of chakra at the surrounding buildings, destroying quite a bit of them. Medusa and Arachne were shocked and Krona was barely staying conscious. When Naruto saw Krona in distress, he actually calmed down. He then walked over to her. Are you okay? He asked sincerely being concerned. He then took her hand and helped her up. I'm fine. She said with a blush on her face. That was the exact moment Ragnarok decided to show up. What is this? He said. Does Krona have a boyfriend? He said. I always thought you were into girls, due to your relationship with that Maka girl. He said, while pinching her cheek. Naruto turned towards Medusa. Does this happen a lot? He asked. Medusa nodded. Yes, it does. She said. Ragnarok is a weapon fused with the black blood in Krona's body. She said. At the time I developed it, I was, as you could say, an evil bitch. She said. The fact that Kashina died, didn't help my mental stability either. She said. But right at the moment I was about to lose her, I realized how much she meant to me. She said. It was after this that I made up with Arachne as well. Naruto knew enough and smiled. He then walked over to Ragnarok and tapped him on the shoulder. What do you want? Ragnarok asked as he turned around, only to be met with a fist to the face, amazing everyone, because he didn't even flinch from the hardness of the black blood. Listen up, idiot. Naruto said. Do you see the massacre around you? He asked. Ragnarok looked around. I was the one who did that. Naruto said, shocking Ragnarok. And if you don't leave Krona alone, you are the next one to feel my wrath. He said and you don't want that do you?" he said. And how do I know you're not bluffing about doing this all? Ragnarok said. Naruto just made the hand signs again and sent a wave at a nearby building, slicing a part of the roof off. Are we clear? Naruto said. Ragnarok, for once, shut up and nodded in agreement and turned back into the black blood. What is the black blood anyway? Naruto asked. The black blood is a facilitator for the madness. Medusa said. It was made for the purpose of making Krona into a Kishin, she said with regret in her voice. The abilities Krona uses, such as the bloody needles, are actually based on Kashina's magic abilities, which were blood-based, she said. But you probably already knew that, as you used her power during your match against Dog Boy, she said. Indeed, Naruto said. Now if you don't mind me asking, he said. What was the reason you came here, he asked. Medusa smiled. Two reasons actually, she said. One is that we want to train you and two, she said. 
to take you with us if you want to and be a family, she said with a smile. When Naruto heard this, he broke his stoic exterior he put up until now and flew at Medusa, taking her into a tight hug. While Medusa was initially shocked, she soon returned the hug. It was that moment that all Naruto's emotions went haywire and he bursted into tears. Medusa just stroked his long hair gently and kissed his forehead. Shish, it's okay, Naruto, she said soothingly. Let it all out, she said. After about 20 minutes, he calmed down. When he pulled away from Medusa, he smiled at her. Thank you, Medusa Chan, he said, making Medusa blush slightly at the suffix. So, he said. When are we beginning with the training? he asked. Medusa smiled. Right now, she said as she grabbed his shoulder and disappeared together with Krona and Arachne. A few moments after they disappeared, the Anbu arrived on the scene. What happened here? One of them asked. Then the Hokage showed up. It seems that Naruto found his family, he said. This is not good, he said. He then looked at the Anbu. I want you to prepare everything, just in case Naruto decides to do something to the village, he said. I won't let those witches take him, when I have spent so long to prevent him from finding out about them, he thought. At an unknown location, Naruto, Krona, Medusa and Arachne arrived at the location they would use to train. This is where we will train, Medusa said. Naruto looked around and saw they were at a large compound. This compound is one your mother built to get away from the village if needed, she said. It is hidden by a powerful spell that only another witch, or in your case a warlock, can see through or detect, she said. But you need some rest now, she said as Naruto nodded. They then led Naruto to his room. He took of his clothes, except for his boxers and laid down on the bed. My life just took a turn for the better, he thought. He then dosed off into sleep. Naruto woke up the next day and found himself still in the compound. He then walked into a room he assumed to be the shower. It was indeed the shower, but when he walked in he found it already occupied. When the curtains were pulled back, it was Krona that came walking out, in just a towel. When she saw Naruto, she blushed bright red and Naruto did pretty much the same. There was awkward silence until Naruto broke it. Don't take this the wrong way Krona, but you look hot, he said with a blush. It was true that she filled out quite a lot in a short period of time. The dress she always wore, did a good job in hiding her assets. She now had full C cup breasts, instead of the B cup she had before, that she most likely bound back a bit with bandages and a nice firm ass. What the bandages didn't hide, the dress did a good job covering up. Krona just blushed as well. Thanks, she said as she looked away. I'll wait outside until you're done, Naruto said as he walked out still blushing. Krona quickly dried herself off and put her clothes on. She then came out of the shower dressed and well. When she saw Naruto she blushed again. I'll see you at the training field, she said as she left the room, a blush still on her face. Naruto just went and took a quick shower. When he got out he put on his clothes and went to the training field. At the training field, Medusa, Arachne and Krona were already waiting for Naruto when he arrived. Sleep well? Medusa asked. Very. Naruto answered. He then looked around and saw a pile of scrolls lying on a table near the field. May I ask what those scrolls are? He asked. Those are scrolls with your mother's techniques, Medusa said. She then took a few small cards out. These cards show all info there is on you, including chakra elements, she said. Just channel your chakra through them. Naruto took one of the cards and pushed his chakra into it. He then looked at the info. Name Naruto Uzumaki Gorgon Age, 16 chakra levels, mid Anbu. Chakra Control. Lo Chunin Ninjutsu, Advanced Genjutsu, N, A. Taijutsu. Basic Kenjutsu, N, A Chakra Natures, Strong Lightning Nature. Abnormal Wind Nature, Abnormal Water Nature, Strong Fire Nature. Known Techniques. Wind Release, Beast Tearing Palm. Shadow Clone Technique, Body Replacement Technique, Transformation Technique. Sexy Technique, Bloody Spear Blood Shunshin. He looked at the information in shock. I have four chakra natures? he asked. Medusa nodded. You inherited your water nature from your mother. While she was a witch, she had an abnormal affinity towards water ninjutsu. She said, the abnormal wind nature and strong lightning nature come from your father, while I suspect that the fire nature comes from your tenant, which I think you found out about, she said. Naruto just nodded, before thinking of something. 
Who was my father? Naruto asked. Medusa looked at him confused. They never told you? She asked. Naruto shook his head. Medusa looked absolutely livid. They never told you that your father was Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage. She said. You mean that my own father sealed the Kyubi inside me? He said. I mean, I understand he couldn't ask someone else to give up their child, but I'm still pissed. He said. But what pisses me off even more is that no one told me about my family. But I'll let that slide for now, since we have training to do. He said. Medusa smiled. You know about the secret about the shadow clone technique, right? She asked. Naruto nodded. I found out two weeks ago, he said. Then the training will go a lot faster. Medusa said. She then motioned to Krona to come over. You take a card as well, she said. Krona took a card and channeled chakra through it. Naruto and Krona then looked at the card. Name. Krona Gorgon Age. 16 Chakra Levels. High Jonin. Chakra Control. Mid Chunin Ninjutsu. Basic Genjutsu. N. A. Taijutsu. Basic Kenjutsu. Advanced Chakra Natures. Strong Fire Nature. Strong Earth Nature. Strong Wind Nature. Known Techniques. Bloody Needle Bloody Slicer Fire Release. Dragon Fire Technique. Fire Release. Phoenix Sage Fire Technique Screech Alpha. Screech Beta Screech Gamma Body Replacement Technique. They looked at the information in shock. You're strong Krona. Naruto said with a smile. Krona just blushed at the praise. Now that you know everything about each other, we can begin the training. Medusa said. In those scrolls are some normal jutsus as well, which are the reason Krona learned some techniques and they include some of your father's techniques as well. These include the Rasengan and Sealing Techniques, as well as some of the techniques his students used, such as the Chidori and several medical techniques, she said. Naruto had a smirk on his face. I wonder how Hitaki will like it when I use the techniques his sensei used against him, he said. But that aside, how are we going to train? he asked. I have an idea, Arachne said. The first week, you and Krona will focus on ninjutsu and genjutsu and yes Krona will train with you. Naruto just smiled. The second week you will both train with Medusa in Taijutsu, she said. The third week you will both train in Kenjutsu, seeing Krona can help you with that. And the last week you will train in whatever you want to perfect, she finished. Naruto then looked at Krona. Let's begin then, he said with a smile. Krona just smiled back. That reminds me, Naruto said. I'll teach you the shadow clone technique as well, then your training will go faster as well. He then told her how to use it. Now you try it, he said. Krona made the hand sign for the technique and in a poof of smoke, about two dozen clones appeared. Naruto smiled. Good job Krona-chan, he said. Krona blushed at the suffix. Thanks Naruto-kun, she said. They then both blushed, as they realized the suffix they used for each other. They then got it together and took a few scrolls and began reading them using the shadow clones. But Medusa interrupted. Okay. You can begin Naruto, Krona, Medusa said. But let's get that seal Orochimaru placed on you off, she said. As she made nad signs, five element seal release, she yelled as she slammed her hand into his stomach. That hurt, Naruto said. But it doesn't matter, because the seal is gone and I can sense the Kyubi again, he said, before thanking Medusa and returning to reading. A few hours later. All right, Naruto said. Let's try this one. He then began making hand signs. Wind release, beast tearing violent wind palm. He yelled. He then thrusted his right hand forward and a large demonic looking claw of chakra shot out, grasping one of the trees that stood around the training area, and crushed it in his grip. So I can use that to GRB things without immediately destroying it. He mused. Interesting. Then Krona was done reading and did some hand signs as well. Fire release, grand fireball technique. She yelled out as she expelled a large fireball out of her mouth. The fireball hit one of the targets and reduced it to ashes. That was amazing Krona Chan. Naruto said. It was just as big as the ones the Uchiha uses and you just began using it. Krona blushed several shades of red at the praise. Thanks Naruto kun, she said. Naruto just smiled. Two weeks later. The training that Naruto and Krona were following paid off. The first week was excellent because the shadow clones made everything way easier to remember and master. The taijutsu training with Medusa went incredibly well. While Medusa preferred to use her feet,
Krona preferred her fists and Naruto was excellent with both. But now it was time for Kenjutsu training. All right Naruto. Medusa said. This scroll contains the Kenjutsu style your mother used. Naruto looked confused. My mother was a witch and used a sword as well. He asked. That's incredible. Medusa smiled. Oh, that reminds me. She said. I have a gift for you. She then gave him a scroll. Put your blood on the seal and watch what happens. She said. Naruto did that and in a poof of smoke two swords appeared. One was a black bladed jien with a white spiderweb pattern on the blade. The other was a katana with a silver blade and a green snake on each side of the blade. Naruto looked at the blades in shock. These blades were your mother's and she always said they represented the bonds she had with me and Arachne. Medusa said. The jien is called black spider and represents your mother's bond with Arachne and the katana is called emerald snake and represents the bond your mother had with me. She explained. I also want to give you this. She said as she took out a large scroll. This is the snake summoning contract. Don't ask how I got it. She said. I already talked to the boss Manda and he agreed to make you one of the summoners, just sign the contract. He then signed the contract. When he was done Medusa showed him the hand signs. Naruto went through them and bit his thumb. Summoning Jutsu. He yelled and a large poof of smoke appeared. When the smoke cleared, a large red snake with black flame like marks appeared. It then spoke in a soft feminine voice. So you are the new summoner Manda was expecting. She said. My name is Kan and I am a flame viper. Why is your type called a flame viper? Naruto asked. Because I have the ability to spit a stream of venom that, as soon as it comes into contact with the air outside my mouth, ignites into flames, she said. Cool. Naruto said. Then he noticed a small snake crawling to him. He held out his hand and smiled. And how might you be, little one? He asked. My name is Viper. The snake said in a female voice. She was pitch black and had a silver star on her forehead and red eyes. I'm an obsidian viper. She said. Our type is famed for our scales, which are harder the steel. She said with pride. And what are you doing here? Naruto asked. I was summoned when you summoned Kan. She said. Lord Manda has assigned me to be your familiar. She said. Then I accept. Naruto said with a smile. Viper then crawled up to his arm and coiled around his neck. Then Naruto looked at Kan. Nice meeting you Kan. You can go inform Manda of the recent developments. He said. Kan nodded and poofed away. Naruto then looked at Medusa. May I have my mother's Kenjutsu scroll? He asked. Sure. Here you go. She said as she gave him the scroll. The style is called the Cursed Fang. Some of the techniques you will find in there, will focus around firing chakra from the blade itself. She said. This will require special blades but your mother stored enough of those in the armory. Naruto just smiled. This style may be great but I will try and develop my own as well, he said. That's what your mother said when she first picked up Kenjutsu. Medusa said, smiling at the memory. Now then. Go and train with Krona. She said. Naruto nodded and went to Krona. He created a shadow clone to read the scroll. When he was done, he began practicing the style with Krona, teaching it to her in the process. From the sideline, Arachne and Medusa looked at them. Look how happy they are together, Arachne said. Indeed, Medusa said. They will probably go beyond just being cousins together as I have seen how they look at each other, she said. Indeed sister, Arachne said. They then saw Naruto raise his sword. Arachne's eyes widened. He is trying that, she said. Prepare yourself Krona, Naruto said. Cursed Fang wave. He yelled as he's end a wave of reddish black chakra at Krona, who raised her own sword. Screech Alpha. She yelled as she sent a mouth shaped sound wave Naruto's attack. The two techniques collided and caused an explosion, knocking both Naruto and Krona down. When the smoke cleared, Naruto and Krona were both knocked out, exhausted from the training. Arachne and Medusa, seeing as it was late anyway, picked them up and put them in bed, together that is. The next morning, Naruto woke up and felt an unfamiliar weight on his chest. When he opened his eyes he saw Krona using his chest as a pillow. He realized that, after they were knocked out, Arachne and Medusa must have put them in bed. He smirked. Those two knew about our feelings I guess, and knew we wouldn't easily admit it. He thought. Then Krona woke up. Naruto-kun? She said, before realizing the position they were in and gained a blush on her face like none before. Sorry. 
she said, before trying to leave, but Naruto grabbed her arm and pulled her into a hug. Don't go Krona-chan, he said. I have been meaning to tell you something, he said. What do you mean? Krona asked. Her question was answered when Naruto kissed her on the lips. Her eyes widened, before she closed them and kissed back. When they pulled back, they looked each other in the eyes. Naruto spoke first. I like you Krona-chan, maybe even love you and not in the way a cousin should, he said. Krona looked at him, before taking him into another hug. I like you too, she said. But I was afraid you would reject me, she said. Naruto then kissed her again. This time they pulled away, when they noticed Medusa and Arachne watching them. About time you two confessed. Medusa said smiling. Now come on you two, we have training to do. Krona and Naruto just smiled and followed them, holding each other's hand. Two weeks later, the day before the exams, Naruto and Krona have been progressing immensely over the last two weeks. Naruto began developing his own Kenjutsu style and has his mother's style mostly mastered. He also began working on his snake techniques and he learned a massive amount of elemental techniques and even some medical techniques, including the Chidori and he even mastered the Rasengan and achieved further mastery of his blood techniques as well. He also developed two new natures, an ice nature, which was thought a bloodline limit, but due to his abnormal affinity towards water and wind, he managed to duplicate it, and dark release. He didn't know how he got it, Bu suspected it to come from the Kyubi, but she kept quiet about it. Krona progressed immensely as well. She learned how to control the black blood in the same way Naruto uses his blood and learned several wind, earth and fire techniques and even developed affinity towards lava release. While it wasn't as strong as a genuine lava release user it was still very powerful. She also learned several medical techniques and even the Rasengan. Okay you two. Medusa said. Let's see what you have learned in the last few weeks. She then pulled out two cards. You know the drill. She said. Naruto took one first and channeled chakra through it. Name. Naruto Uzumaki Gorgon Age. 16 chakra level. Low to mid cage. Chakra control. Mid Anbu Ninjutsu. Expert Genjutsu. Basic. Taijutsu. Expert Kenjutsu. Advanced chakra natures. Strong lightning nature abnormal wind nature abnormal water nature. Strong fire nature dark nature ice nature known techniques. Wind release. Beast tearing palm wind release, beast tearing violent wind palm. Wind release. Divine wind wind release, flower scattering dance. Wind release. Pressure damage wind release, gale palm. Wind release. Drilling air bullet wind release, gale cannon. Wind release. Godly wind from the mountains wind release, great breakthrough. Water release. Water dragon bullet technique water release, rainstorm technique. Water release. Water Fang Bullet Water Release, Rising Water Slicer. Water Release. Black Rain Water Release, Exploding Water Colliding Wave. Water Release. Water Encampment Wall Water Release, Water Dragon Whip. Water Release. Wild Water Wave Water Release, Jet Cutter. Water Release. Crash Current Water Release, Water Serpent. Water Release. Water Prison Technique Water Release, Gunshot. Water Release. Water Gathering Gorgon Fire Release, Phoenix Sage Fire Technique. Fire Release. Dragon Fire Technique Fire Release, Great Dragon Fire Technique. Fire Release. Grand Fireball Technique Fire Release, Running Fire. Fire Release. Roaring Flame Sphere Fire Release, Intelligent Hard Work. Fire Release. Firewall Fire Release, Cultist Flame. Fire Release. Inquisition Flare Lightning Release, False Darkness. Lightning Release. Electromagnetic Murder Lightning Release, Wave of Inspiration. Lightning Release. Lightning Dragon Tornado Lightning Release, Sacred Bolt. Lightning Release. Lightning Dragon Bullet Lightning Release, Thunderclaw. Lightning Release. Hell Thunder Chidori Chidori Current. Crimson Chidori Crimson Chidori, Dragon Claw Rasengan. Crimson Rasengan Bloody Needle Bloody Spear Bloody Sword. Bloody Slicer Bloody Fountain Bloody Needle. Piercing Rain. Bloody Wings Bloody Serpents Hidden Shadow Snake Hands. Multiple Hidden Shadow Snake Hands Snake Summoning. Cursed Fang Wave Cursed Fang Thrust Cursed Fang Hydra Blast. Cursed Fang. Dance of Fury Cursed Fang. Dance of Blood. Cursed Fang. Dance of Death Dance of Pain. Cyclone of Suffering. Dance of Pain. 
Cyclone of suffering. Slicing gale dance of pain. Cyclone of suffering. Slicing gale hurricane. Sexy technique shadow clone technique Kanai shadow clone technique. Blood clone technique body replacement technique transformation technique. Blood shunshun ice release. Demonic ice mirrors ice release. Swallow snowstorm. Ice release. Ice prison dark release. Chains of the abyss. Dark release. Coffin of the Underworld Dark Release Kenjutsu, Infinite Blades Iron Maiden. Mystical Palm Technique Chakra Scalpel Poison Mist. Mirrors of the Soul. Howls of the Damned Mirrors of the Soul. Vision of Hell. Generic Sealing Technique Fuenjutsu Master Level When Medusa saw the stats, she was shocked. Naruto had more techniques in his arsenal than almost every Jonin has. She then gave Krona a card. Name. Krona Gorgon Age. 16. Chakra level. High Anbu to low cage chakra control, high Anbu. Ninjutsu. Expert Genjutsu. Basic Taijutsu. Advanced. Kenjutsu. Expert chakra natures, strong fire nature. Strong earth nature, strong wind nature, lava nature. Known techniques. Fire release. Dragon fire technique. Fire release. Phoenix sage fire technique. Fire release. Running fire. Fire release. Grand Fireball Technique Fire Release, Roaring Flame Sphere. Fire Release. Fire Dragon Flame Bullet Fire Release, Great Fire Dragon Technique. Fire Release. Mist Blaze Dance Technique Fire Release, Intelligent Hard Work. Fire Release. Firewall Fire Release, Cultist Flame. Fire Release. Inquisition Flare Earth Release, Earth Flow Spears. Earth Release. Earth Flow River Earth Release, Earth Flow Wave. Earth release. Earth style wall earth release. Devouring earth. Earth release. Earth dragon earth release. Earth mausoleum dumbling. Wind release. Beast tearing palm wind release. Beast tearing violent wind palm. Wind release. Divine wind wind release. Pressure damage. Wind release. Drilling air bullet wind release. Flower scattering dance. Wind release. Great breakthrough lava release. Magma bullets. Lava release. Lava Geyser Lava Release, Magma Storm. Lava Release. Magma Tsunami Mystical Palm Technique. Poison Mist Chakra Scalpel Shadow Clone Technique Bloody Sword. Bloody Spear Bloody Slicer Bloody Needle Bloody Fountain. Bloody Needle. Piercing Rain Rasengan Blood Shunshun. Transformation Technique Body Replacement Technique. Cursed Fang Wave Cursed Fang Thrust Cursed Fang Hydra Blast. Screech Alpha Screech Beta Screech Gamma Blood Clone Technique. Shadow Clone Technique Kanai Shadow Clone Jutsu Generic Sealing Technique. Fuan Jutsu Advanced Level Mirrors of the Soul, Howls of the Damned. Mirrors of the Soul. Vision of Hell Medusa was shocked at the stats Krona had. While the technique list wasn't as large as Naruto's, but was larger than most Jonin's. What the hell have you been doing these past few weeks? She asked. Training with shadow clones. Naruto answered. If you look at the chakra levels we have, you will see how that worked, he said with pride. Okay, you win. Medusa said. Then, out of nowhere, a large poof of smoke appeared. When the smoke cleared, Kan and Manda were standing in the field. Hello, Naruto. Manda said in a booming voice. Hello, Lord Manda. Naruto said with a bow. What is the occasion? he asked. Vipra asked for a special gift a few weeks ago and now it's done. Manda said as Kan dropped a package she had wrapped up in her tail on the ground in front of Naruto. Naruto looked at Vipra and she gave him the snake version of a smile. Open it. She said. When he opened it, he was stunned. In the package was a pitch black trench coat with silver flames licking the bottom. He then looked at Vipra. Is that made of what I think it is? He asked. Yep. She said proudly. A trench coat made from the shed skins of obsidian vipers, she said. The flames are made with permanent paint and it has seals on it that make it immune to fire. Naruto smiled before kissing Vipra on her forehead. Thanks Vipra, Kan, Lord Manda, he said. You're welcome, Naruto, Manda said, before poofing away. Bye Naruto-kun, Kan said before poofing away again. Naruto still looked at the coat. It's absolutely beautiful, he said. But I guess I should go to bed. Don't want to be late tomorrow, right? He said. He then left towards his room. At Naruto's room. Naruto took off his clothes except for his boxers, 
He then got in his bed. When he wanted to go to sleep, his door opened and Krona walked in. She was, however, wearing nothing more than black panties and red nightgown. Hello Naru-kun. She said as she crawled in bed with him and kissed him on the lips. Hello Krona-chan. Naruto said when they pulled apart, before kissing her again and grabbing her ass and massaging it. In the weeks after the day they confessed, there hasn't been a night that Krona and Naruto didn't spend in the same bed. They had become lovers in all but the act itself. After making out for a while, they pulled apart. Let's go to sleep Krona-chan, he said as he pulled her to his chest. Good night Haim. Good night Naru-kun, Krona said, before snuggling into his chest and falling asleep. And that makes the second chapter. Also if you think that I'm moving too fast with the romance, that may be so, but to me it doesn't matter. You may have seen that Naruto and Krona have a lot of techniques and may seem overpowered, but remember that with shadow clones that is easy to achieve, in my opinion at least. See you all next time. The day of the finals. At the stadium, people were buzzing with excitement. Every finalist was there, except for Naruto. Yes Sasuke and Kakashi were on time. Genma then silenced the crowd and called down Neji. Will Naruto Uzumaki come down? Genma said. He then noticed that nobody came down. In the stands. I knew the Baka wouldn't show up, Sakura said. I hope he gets disqualified, Ino said, especially after what he said in the preliminaries. Yes, Kiba said, he should pay for humiliating me. Sasuke and Kakashi just kept quiet as they didn't know what to think of Naruto anymore. On the field. I knew it. Neji said, he finally understood that he can't defy fate. He kept ranting, until he was silenced by a blast of killing intent from the entrance. When everybody looked at the entrance, they saw a hooded figure walking in. Who are you? Genma asked. Naruto Uzumaki Gorgon, at your service. The person said as he took of his hood and shook his hair loose. Everyone was stunned. Naruto had changed even more than he did before. He was wearing a black, sleeveless hoodie, the one Medusa wears, but made for guys, the same black, metal-plated combat boots but with three spikes at the toes, black cargo pants and black fingerless gloves with metal studs all over the gloves. What surprised everyone was the trench coat. In the stands. In the stands, Anko had a look of shock on her face. Her friend Kuranai saw this. What's wrong Anko? She asked. That coat is made of the skin of an obsidian viper. Anko said. That means the kid can summon snakes. What? Kuranaya yelled, startling Hanada and Kiba. What's wrong sensei? Hanada asked timidly. Naruto can apparently summon snakes, Kuranaya said. Everyone was shocked, but kept their mouths shut. At the stadium. Are you both ready? Genma asked. They just nodded. Hajime, Genma said. Neji looked at him and smirked. You should just give up, he said. You can't defy fate and it's my fate to win here, he ranted. Naruto just looked at him and threw off his trench coat. I'm gonna show you just how wrong you are, Naruto said with a dark grin. Please, the gentle fist is the strongest taijutsu style in Konoha, Neji bragged. That may be true, Naruto said, but my style isn't from Konoha, he said. The moves Naruto uses in Taijutsu were not listed in the previous chapter, because that would have dragged the list out even longer, than it already was, same for Krona's. In the stands, the Baka is bluffing, Sakura said. He is not. Someone said. When they turned around, they saw Medusa, Krona and Arachne standing there. My nephew isn't gonna lose, Medusa said. Naruto Baka is your nephew? Sakura asked. Yes he is, Medusa said he is also Krona's cousin. Then I pity you for being the family of a loser. Sakura said. I really feel sore. She said before she was cut off by a sword to the throat. When she looked she saw that Krona was holding the sword. Insult Naruto-kun again. She said. And I'll kill you. She said in a cold voice argumented with a bit of ki. Why do you call him Kun? Sakura asked, kinda oblivious to the sword. Because he is not only my cousin, but also my boyfriend, you pink-haired banshee, Krona said. Your boyfriend is your cousin? Sakura asked. You both are really day, she said before Ino clamped a hand over Sakura's mouth. If you don't want to be killed, shut up, she whispered. That girl is serious about killing you and she has a sword to your throat if you didn't notice. Sakura then kept her mouth shut. Good, Krona said as she put the sword away, with the Hyuga. 
Watch closely Hanabi. Hiyashi said. No Hyuga has thicker blood than Neji. Hanabi just looked at the match. In the arena. There is no Taijutsu stronger than the Gentle Fist. The Hyugas are the best clan in the world. Neji ranted. Naruto just charged. We will see about that. He said, Shadow Rush, he yelled, before suddenly speeding up and hitting Neji in the face. Neji flew back a few meters before skidding to a halt. What was that? He demanded. One of my Taijutsu techniques. Naruto said with a smirk. And this is another one. He said. Mirage. He muttered, before he disappeared and reappeared behind Neji. Kai. He yelled as he thrusted both palms forward and sent out a large wave of energy in the form of a lion's head, blasting Neji away. When Neji got up he glared at Naruto. Byakugan. He said activating his bloodline. He then dashed at Naruto. You're within my field of divination. He said once he got close. 8 trigrams 64 palms. He said as he charged. 2 palms. Neji said and hit. 4 palms. He hit again. 8 palms. Again he hit. 16 palms. And again. 32 palms. And again. Take this, 64 palms. He yelled as he struck Naruto, who collapsed. Everyone looked in shock. In the stands. I said he would lose, Sakura said. He is still the dead last. Kakashi thought, don't be so sure, Krona said with a smirk. What do you mean? Sakura demanded. You will see soon, Krona replied. Hiyashi thought about his brother. You have truly been denied your rightful place as clan head, brother. Back at the arena. Proctor called a match. Neji said, he isn't getting up. Then Naruto's body exploded into blood, shocking everyone. They then heard a dark chuckle, that soon grew into full-blown insane laughter. When Neji looked behind him, he saw Naruto standing there, laughing like a madman. Congrats on beating my blood clone. He said. Too bad that he didn't even have 10% of my power and he didn't fight back on that last attack. Naruto said, before he began laughing again. Everyone but Krona, Medusa and Arachne, thought he was crazy. What are you? Neji asked, unnerved by the laughter. What am I? Naruto said. Let's see. I have been called a demon, a monster, an abomination. He summed up. But I prefer the term warlock, but calling me a demon isn't bad either. He said, before laughing again. He then began making hand signs. Now then. He said. I think it's time for some fun. Naruto said with a dark grin, as he finished the hand signs. Lightning release. Hell thunder. He yelled as he pointed his middle and index finger at Neji and sent out a bolt of dark purple lightning at Neji. Neji just barely dodged it. When the bolt hit the rock behind Neji, it was completely destroyed. Neji could only stare in shock. Naruto was still laughing, when he began making hand signs again. You lose. He said as he finished. Wind release. Flower scattering dance. He yelled as he launched a cyclone of flower petals at Neji. This time Neji couldn't dodge the technique as he was too shocked to do anything, and was swept away, crashing into the wall of the arena. He looked up at Naruto and was about to say something, when Naruto beat him to the punch. If you're going to whine about your past and your father's death, don't. He said. I honestly don't give a flying fuck. He then turned to Genma. Call the match. He said. Winner Naruto Uzumaki Gorgon. Genma said. Naruto just picked up his trench coat and used a blood shunshun to appear besides Krona. Hello Krona Chan. He said. He didn't get a verbal answer, however. Krona just grabbed his coat and pulled him into a kiss, shocking most popal and making Hanada almost cry. After a few minutes they pulled apart. Wow. He said. Krona just smiled. Hey Dobi. Sasuke said. Naruto turned around with a bored expression. Where did you get that power? Sasuke asked. None of your business, Uchiha. Naruto said. I demand you tell me, Sasuke said. No, Naruto said. And I would get down if I were you, because your match is about to start. And you're interrupting my time with Krona chan. This isn't over yet. Sasuke said, before walking to the arena. In the cage box. The case cage, aka Orochimaru, was smirking. I think I'll keep the matches going. That Naruto kid is interesting and I want to see how he does against Sasuke kun. He thought. Maybe I should have given him my gift. The arena. The match was going well for Sasuke and he was about to finish it. He stood on the wall lightning arching in his hand. Take this, freak. 
Sasuke said, as he dashed down. Chidori, he yelled as he pierced through the sphere of sand. Then Gara felt something warm on his shoulder, blood? He said. Then he freaked out. Blood, it's my blood, he yelled. The sphere then fell apart and Gara was panting with an insane look in his eyes. He was about to attack again, when he felt an insane amount of ki focused on him. He looked up and saw Naruto looking at him shaking his head. Inside Gara's head Shukaku was begging him to listen to Naruto and for once he did so. Proctor I forfeit. Gara said, before using a sand shunshun to appear in the stands. Winner Sasuke Uchiha. Genma said. Sasuke just scoffed. With Gara. Naruto and Medusa walked over to Gara. I think we have the solution to your seal problem. Naruto said. Gara's eyes widened. I'll do anything, just fix it. Gara said. Naruto looked at Tamari and Konkuro. Konkuro, you forfeit and tell Suna to ambush the auto forces. If you have the element of surprise, you can easily beat them. Naruto said. The person up there is not the case cage, but Orochimaru. Konkuro nodded. Anything else? Gara asked. Naruto shook his head. The feeling you are going to feel will be enough reason not to pay me back. He then motioned to Medusa. Evil soul destruction. She yelled as she slammed her hand into his stomach. This should solve the problem, as it destroys the soul that causes Shukaku to go berserk. Naruto said. The poor girl doesn't deserve to have another soul driving her crazy. Naruto thought, referring to Shukaku. Maybe I can find a way to set her free without killing Gara. He thought. Now that I think of it, I should look for a way to set Kayubi free as well. Gara looked like he was in pain, but regained his composure quickly. That was unpleasant, but thank you, he said. Naruto and Medusa just smiled and walked away. At the arena. Next match, Konkuro vs Shino Aburame, Genma said. I forfeit. Konkuro said. Genma sighed. Fine, he said. Tamari vs Shikamaru Nara. This went the same as canon. No one in the stands was surprised that Shikamaru surrendered. Next match. Sasuke Uchiha vs Naruto Uzumaki Gorgon, Genma said. Sasuke smirked and Naruto got an insane smile on his face. You are going to lose Dobi, Sasuke said. Naruto just laughed. You really think that? Naruto asked. Then you're even dumber than I expected, he laughed. He then took out a sword, namely Black Spider and threw his trench coat off. He then took raised his sword, Riku's style from Kingdom Hearts. Let me show you the power of madness, he said, an insane glint in his eyes and a dark, insane grin on his face. In the stands. When Naruto said that, was also the exact moment Vipra appeared around Krona's neck. Hey Krona, she said. Krona smiled. Hey Vipra, she said. Then Sakura spoke up again. What is that disgusting snake doing here, she said. Ignore the banshee Vipra, and just watch the match. The same goes for you Haruno. Krona said, using Ki to prove her point. Sakura shut up and began watch the match, in the arena. Genma raised his hand. Hajime, he said as he jumped away. Not a second later Naruto already dashed toward Sasuke and swung his sword down while channeling Chakra through it. Sasuke just barely dodged the strike, that, when it hit the ground, created a large crater. You did good in dodging that. Naruto said. I wouldn't want the match to be over with one attack he said. You're not going to win anyway, Dobi, Sasuke said. Naruto just laughed. Tell me Sasuke-chan, he said mockingly. Can you walk on water? he asked. Yes, why? Sasuke asked. Because of this, Naruto said, before sealing his sword and making hand signs. Water release, exploding water colliding wave, he yelled as he spit out a large amount of water from his mouth. Sasuke quickly jumped on the walls to avoid it. When the jutsu was done, the stadium was filled with about 20 meters of water. What? I held back with the amount when compared to Kisame, and Sasuke jumped and landed on top of the water. Is that all, Dobi? Sasuke said. No, Naruto said. I just needed to fill this place with water. He said before making more hand signs. Water release. Water fang bullet. He yelled, as several drills of water appeared around Sasuke. The drills coveraged on Sasuke and pierced him from all sides. Until Sasuke turned into a heavily maimed log. Damn, I missed. Naruto said. You really suck at this, Dobi. Sasuke mocked. 
Naruto just laughed and made more hand signs. Time for more fun. Naruto said with a grin. Wind release. Drilling air bullet. He said and fired three bullets of compressed air at Sasuke. Sasuke just barely dodged them and he began making his own hand signs, as did Naruto. Fire release. Grand fireball technique. They yelled at the same time. The two fireballs collided and caused a large explosion. In the stands. How does Naruto know that technique? Kakashi asked. He learned it from a scroll. Medusa said. And before you ask, yes he has four elemental affinities. Kakashi just stood there. In the arena. How do you know that technique? Sasuke demanded. I learned it from a scroll. Naruto said. I forbid you to use it again, it belongs to the Uchiha. Sasuke said. Naruto just laughed. Do I look like I care? Naruto said. You really are stupid, demanding something like that in the middle of a match. He laughed, with most of the shinobi agreeing. Now you lose, he said coldly. Don't think so, Sasuke said, as he charged up at Shidori. In the stands. Kakashi's eyes widened. I told him not to use that against a fellow Konoha shinobi, he said. And you thought he would listen? Medusa said. The kid is as mentally unstable as Haruno over there is loud, and that says a lot. Kakashi said nothing, because he didn't have a comeback and Sakura said nothing because she was scared. The arena. Naruto was laughing. You think that will be enough? Naruto said. Think again. He then made hand signs. Lightning release. Thunderclaw. He yelled as thunderclouds began to converge above him. Then a bolt of lightning shot down and morphed into a claw around Naruto's hand. How do you like it? Unlike the Chidori this jutsu uses real lightning and not just chakra. You're still weaker than me, and this will prove it. Sasuke said as he dashed towards Naruto. Chidori, he yelled. Naruto just cocked his arm back and thrust it forward to meet the Chidori. The collision of the two attacks caused an explosion, strong enough to shake the stadium and cause the water to make crashing waves against the stadium walls. When the spectators watched they saw only Sasuke standing there. And the water disappeared spontaneously, into thin air. The crowd began cheering that the demon was dead while Krona, Medusa and Arachne were awfully quiet. The crowd kept cheering, until they were cut off by a sound. It began as a dark chuckle, but soon turned into full-blown, dark, insane laughter. Ha 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 ha. The voice laughed. When everyone turned towards the location of the voice, they saw Naruto, but he was different. His skin had become pale, on his forehead was a mark that resembled a third eye, his pupils were shaped as eyes as well, just like Asura, and his eyes were blood-red. He now had fangs and his nails turned into claws, his whisker marks were more pronounced and his arms were covered in black tribal tattoos and on the palms of his hands, which were visible because the gloves were destroyed, were eye-shaped marks as well. Guess that the backlash from my thunderclaw is still a bit too much. I should learn to control it better. He said, before gaining an insane look in his eyes and an insane smile on his face. But now you die. He said. He then held his hand out and red energy gathered in front of the eye mark on his palm, before he fired it at Sasuke. Sasuke's eyes widened as he barely dodged the blast. The section of the wall where the blast hit instead, gained a small crater in it. Then Naruto charged energy in both palms, before firing a barrage of energy bolts at Sasuke, forcing him to strain himself to dodge all of them, before getting hit with five consecutive bolts, sending him into the wall. Naruto then unsealed a serrated katana and quickly charged at Sasuke, impaling him through the shoulder. What's wrong Sasuke? Naruto asked in an fake innocent tone of voice. Weren't you supposed to beat me? He said. Guess not. He then slowly pulled out the sword, making Sasuke face turn to one of pain. He then thrust the blade into Sasuke's stomach making him scream. Yes, scream. Naruto said with an insane grin. Then a hand was placed on his shoulder. He turned around and saw Genma. I declare Naruto the winner. Genma said. Naruto just took the sword out of Sasuke, swiped the blood off and sealed it. You're lucky he interfered, or you would be dead. Naruto sneered, before his appearance returned to normal. Naruto looked a bit dazed. Wow. Guess the madness was too much to control. He said. Should work on that. It was still fun though. He mumbled, before putting on his coat and using blood shunshun to appear besides Krona. Hey Krona Chan, he said, giving her a kiss on the cheek. Hey Naru kun, she replied. Back at the arena. 
Next match is Shino Abarame vs Tamari, Genma said. I forfeit. Shino said. Those wind attacks would do too much damage to my hive, he said. Genma nodded in understanding. Winner, Tamari. Genma announced. Tamari nodded. I am afraid I'll forfeit against Naruto, she said. After what I have seen in the last match, I'm no match for him, she said. Everyone in the stadium agreed on that one. At the cage box. Damn it. Orochimaru thought. I have to call off the invasion. Gara isn't any use and Sasuke is out. And that Naruto kid is a factor I didn't prepare for. And to top it off, my sacrifices for my summoning have been destroyed. He then gave a mental command to Kabuto that the invasion was off. Orochimaru Sama. Kabuto said mentally. Suna betrayed and ambushed us, we had to retreat. Orochimaru was now seething inside. Then Naruto appeared in the cage box, without his coat. Hello Naruto kun. Serutobi said in a grandfatherly tone. Naruto just shot him a glare. I'll talk to you later Hokage sama. He sneered, shocking everyone. He then unsealed Emerald Snake and stabbed the case cage. Why did you do that Naruto? Serutobi asked in shock, before the case cage jumped away and threw off his robes, revealing Orochimaru. Trying to kill a snake, old fart. Naruto said. He then sealed his sword and made a few hand signs. Fire release. Phoenix Sage fire technique. He said, launching a few dozen small fireballs at Orochimaru. Orochimaru dodged some of them, but was hit with most of them. The charred remains of Orochimaru then went up in a poof of smoke. Shadow clones. Naruto grumbled. Stupid copycat. Orochimaru then appeared behind Naruto, Kusanagi ready to decapitate him. Naruto used a blood shunshun to move out of the way. At that moment the sound four appeared. Put up the barrier. Orochimaru yelled. Before they could, however, Naruto cocked his arm back and thrust it forward. Bloody spear. He yelled as he shot a spear of blood towards Kitamaru. The spear pierced his head, killing him instantly. Kitamaru. Saken, Yukon and Jirobo yelled, before they were pierced through the head with a spear as well. Tuyuya had a smirk on her face. Serves the bastards right for trying to grope me and calling me weak because I'm a woman, she said. Naruto turned to her with a smile. I like your style, he said. Wanna join my clan? He asked. I know you're not with Orochimaru on your own free will. I'm only with him, because he said my friend Kin was killed by Konoha, she answered. Then Naruto smirked. She is alive, you know, he said. Tuyuya was shocked. How? She asked. Orochimaru was planning on using her as a sacrifice for his impure world resurrection. He said. I saved her, as well as destroying the rest of the sacrifices, and put her in an artificial coma to let her heal. Nobody, not even my family, knows of this. Tuyuya had tears in her eyes. Thank you, she said. Naruto smiled. You're welcome, he said, before turning to Orochimaru. But now I have a snake to kill. Orochimaru made hand signs. Take this, he yelled. Wind release, great breakthrough, he yelled as he sent a gigantic gust of wind at Naruto, who used a blood shunshun to get out of the way. He then made his own hand signs and smirked. Lighting release, false darkness, he yelled as he fired a large bolt of lightning at Orochimaru from his mouth, who narrowly dodged it and threw a few kanai at Naruto. Naruto just unsealed Emerald Snake and deflected the kanai. He then dashed towards Orochimaru and they began a duel of swords. Orochimaru then got a few small hits, before stabbing Naruto through the arm. Naruto frowned from the pain, while Orochimaru jumped away smirking, and began making hand signs. Summoning Jutsu. He yelled as a large poof of smoke appeared. When it disappeared, Mando was coiled around the building. Who summoned me? He asked in a booming voice. He then saw Naruto standing in front of him and Orochimaru on his head. Orochimaru, did you summon me to fight this kid? Manda asked. Yes, now kill him. Orochimaru ordered. No, Manda said. Why not? Orochimaru demanded. The snakes will not fight another one of their summoners. Manda said, before he poofed away. Naruto smirked. Oh, did I forget to mention that I can summon snakes too? He said. How did you get the contract? Orochimaru said. I lost it years ago. My aunt Medusa gave it to me. Naruto answered. So it was that bitch who raided my base two years ago. 
Orochimaru yelled, before he had a fist slammed into his face, knocking him down. When he got up, he saw Naruto glaring at him. If you call Medusa-chan a bitch again, I'll kill you. He said coldly, before his skin began to pale and his wounds healed. His eyes changed again and the markings on his arms, palms and forehead returned, turning him into the form he had in his fight with Sasuke. If you insult anyone I care about ever again, there won't be a corpse to bury at your funeral. He growled. He then held up his left arm and pointed his index finger towards Orochimaru. Demon arrow. He growled, before his finger shot towards Orochimaru, in the form of a steel cable with an arrowhead on the end of it. Orochimaru was shocked and tried to dodge, but was hit in his side. Damn you. He growled as the wound slowly began to heal. I'll kill you, he said. Naruto just laughed insanely, before four cables burst from his back. They were the same as the one on his finger with only a few differences. They were larger and thicker and the heads were larger, kanai shaped and had barbs on them. With Medusa, Krona and Arachne, he looks just like Asura in that form, Medusa said. Now that I think of it, those energy bolts he used are very similar to the ones Asura uses. Do you mean he became a Kishin? Arachne asked. No, Medusa replied. But those cables signify that he has weapon blood, however and the energy blasts are condensed soul energy. Minato must have had the weapon blood, but never used it. She mused. He does, however, have an immense amount of madness in his soul that rivals Asura, but he appears to be able to partially control the output of it as no one is feeling the effects here. Maybe the Kyubi has something to do with it. Back at the battle. Watch closely Orochi-chan. Naruto mocked. Because if you don't watch out, you will die. He said as he sealed Emerald Snake, raised his hand and began gathering energy in front of the mark. Soul Blaster. He yelled as he fired a blast. Orochimaru narrowly dodged it and, when it hit the ground, left a very large crater in it, proving that the blast was way more powerful than the ones he used against Sasuke. He then fired several more at him. Dance, snake, dance. Naruto laughed insanely as he kept firing, destroying a most of the roof and raising a large cloud of dust. Orochimaru tried to sense Naruto in the cloud, before he heard something. Demon arrows. Naruto yelled as he fired the cables on his back into the cloud right at Orochimaru's position. Orochimaru's eyes widened, before he jumped back to avoid the cables. He was hit with one of them, however, leaving him with large gash in his side. Then Naruto jumped out of the cloud, wielding Emerald Snake. He made a few swings at Orochimaru, who dodged them, before raising his sword. Cursed Fang Wave. He yelled as he swung his sword down and sent a large wave of reddish-black chakra at Orochimaru said snake's eyes widened at the wave before it hit when the chakra disappeared orochimaru was there with a large gash across his chest naruto then cocked the sword back cursed fang thrust he yelled as he thrust it forward and sent a drill of reddish black chakra at orochimaru orochimaru tried to dodge but was a little too slow and his leg was slightly shredded you stupid little brat orochimaru spat at naruto Naruto just smirked and grasped the blade with two hands and cocked it back. I'm going to show you the ultimate technique of my mother's kenjutsu style. He then gathered insane amounts of chakra in the blade. Cursed Fang Hydra Blast. He yelled as he thrust the blade forward and five hydra heads made of the same reddish black chakra at Orochimaru. Orochimaru's eyes widened as the heads came closer. Before he could dodge he was hit with the full force of the attack, causing an insanely large explosion. When the smoke cleared, Orochimaru's body lay on the ground, shredded and mangled, before he struggled up. His arms were both torn off and his body was covered in cuts. You will pay for this, he said, before he began sinking into the ground. I severely underestimated the brat, he thought as he sank. Oh no, you don't, Naruto said. Demon arrows, he yelled, as he fired the cables on his back at Orochimaru. They sped towards the Sanin but Orochimaru disappeared into the ground before the cables hit and got away. Damn it. Naruto cursed. He then turned towards Serutobi with a scowl on his face. I guess the council will want to speak to me about this soon. Naruto said. If they do, just send an ANBU, because I don't feel like talking to you. Naruto said, before walking over to Toyuya. Before he could go away an Anbu decided to interfere. That woman is to be taken in for interrogation, so step away from her he ordered. Naruto just made hand signs. Mirrors of the soul. Howls of the damned. He said coldly. 
The Ambu's vision blurred and turned into a pure white world with eight mirrors surrounding him. He then saw faces appear in the mirrors. The faces then began screaming in agony. The Ambu covered his ears, trying to block out the sound. He then tried to dispel it, but found he could not. Finally the man passed out and the jutsu ended. Naruto just put his hand onto Yuya's shoulder and used blood shunshun to disappear. Serutobi shook his head. He knows everything, he muttered. Maybe I will have Jiraiya seal his memories, so he doesn't remember anything about those witches, he said. With Naruto, Medusa, Arachne, Tuyuya and Krona. I really hate that snake, no offense to actual snakes Vipra. Naruto said to the snake that was still around Krona's neck. Non taken, Naruto. Viper replied. I know what you mean. Tuyuya said. That bastard is terrible. He used everyone for his experiments and I swear he has a thing for little boys. She said with a shudder which was shared by the rest. Naruto. Krona said. Naruto turned towards her. Why didn't you tell us about that girl Kin? She asked. I couldn't risk it. He said. I do trust you, but someone could overhear it and I really couldn't risk it. He said. How long after we met did you find her? Krona asked. One week. He said. I first met her in the forest of death when I was still sealed. Even then I already kinda liked her and when I found her about to be used as a sacrifice, I couldn't help but interfering. He said. During the time she was with us, I did wake her up a few times and talk to her. She is really fond of you to Yuya and I think I have grown to like her as well. Krona smiled. I don't mind, she said. Ragnarok is right about one thing and that is that I like girls as well. Naruto smiled. I knew it, he said. What do you mean? Krona asked. I mean that I already figured out you were bisexual, he said. Especially after I noticed the way you talked about that Maka girl. Krona blushed. But that's not the point, Naruto said. We need to get back to the compound for now and wake Kin up. At that moment a shadow clone under a transformation appeared with a bag in his hand and gave it to Naruto before disappearing. What are those? Medusa asked. Secret. Naruto replied with a smile. You will see when we get home, he said. They then walked to the compound. At the compound. When the group got to the compound, Tuyuya was stunned. This is your home? She asked. It's freaking huge. The rest looked at her with wide eyes. What? She asked. You can see it? Naruto asked. Why shouldn't I? She replied. Because only a witch or warlock can see through the spell without any help. Naruto answered. Which means you have a witch's blood in you. I just wonder how your parents are, he said. I don't know my parents, she said. I only know they are possibly alive somewhere, she said. That's okay, to Yuya, he said. We will train you in magic and seeing I need more training as well, seeing as I don't my animal theme yet, we can train together, he said with a smile. To Yuya smiled back. I would like that, to Yuya said. But let's go see Kin now, they then went inside. As soon as Naruto stepped into the living room, he was tackled to the ground by someone, namely Kin. Naruto, she said as she hugged him. I'm so glad you're back, she said. Is this your family? She asked. Yes Kin Chan, they are my family, he said. Everyone, this is Kin Suchi. Kin bowed. Hello everyone, she said, before hugging Naruto's arm. Let's sit down everyone, Naruto said. I have a present for you all. He then took five boxes out of the bag he carried and gave them to the girls. First Medusa opened hers and her eyes widened, in it was a bracelet. It was shaped like a golden snake, with emeralds along his entire length. Arachne got a gold bracelet with a black spider on it, made from black onyx. Kin got a gold ring with a blood-red ruby on it. Tuyuya got a gold necklace with a large amethyst as an amulet. The biggest surprise was Krona's gift. In the box was gold bracelet with eight black onyxes on it, a platinum ring with a large black onyx, a gold necklace with a silver locket that had a large ruby on it. When she opened the locket, she found a small piece of text engraved in it. It said, together for eternity, Haim, Krona looked at Naruto. Thank you. She said as she hugged him before kissing him deeply. When they broke apart Naruto smiled. Sorry that your gifts are a bit plain kin, to Yuya. He said. I had less time to prepare them than I had with the others. The eyes of said girls widened. Do you call this plain? They asked in unison. If this is plain, I would love to see what is special. Tuyuya said with a smile. 
Naruto smiled as well. Let's get some sleep. He said as everyone walked to their assigned rooms, Krona and even Kin, joining Naruto. Naruto smiled and fell asleep quickly. And so ends another chapter. I apologize for the time it took. School takes up a lot of time, especially since it my last year. You can see I kept Kin and Tuyuya alive and made Tuyuya a witch. As for Naruto and his new form, that will be explained soon enough. And the reasons for the easy battles? I mean come on. Neji, Sasuke and Orochimaru are the most arrogant assholes in the series. Neji and Sasuke both thought Naruto was still the dead last and Orochimaru underestimated him because he thought of him as a normal genin. The next day. Naruto woke up late in the morning. Krona and Kin had already woken up, so he got out of bed, took a shower and got dressed in his casual clothes, the clothes he wore in his match against Kiba, and walked out of the compound, deciding that he would take a walk. In the village. Naruto had been walking for about an hour, when a female, purple-haired Anbu with a cat mask showed up. You were called before the council, she said. Naruto nodded. How long do I have? He asked. Two hours, the Anbu said. Naruto nodded as the Anbu disappeared. Naruto then used a blood shunshun to go back to the compound to inform his family. Two hours later in the council chambers, Sarutobi was waiting for Naruto to arrive. Jiraiya was waiting in the shadows to interfere with his seals at the right moment. That was the moment Naruto and his family walked into the room. What is the reason I was called? He asked. The Hokage's advisors looked at the boy with a small smile, even Danzo, shocking, isn't it? So this is Kashina's son, Sume said. He looks just like her. Naruto looked at her. You knew, he said. Sume nodded. I did, but the Hokage forbid me from telling you she said, glaring at the Hokage. Naruto smirked. And who else had a situation like this? Shikaku, Inoichi and Shuza raised their hands, and what do you think of me? Naruto asked. While we don't like what you said to our children, we know they deserved it in a way and we will support your family in this. Shikaku said. Naruto then looked at the Hokage. Anything to add old man? He said. That's when the Hokage signaled Jiraiya. Jiraiya charged at Naruto. Before he got there however, Naruto spun around and delivered a kick to Jiraiya's head, sending him flying into the wall. Any reason that pervert tried to use memory suppressing seals? Because it makes me think you don't want me to know about my family, he said coldly. The Hokage was seething inside. Stop this nonsense Naruto, Serutobi said. These new abilities and appearance are obviously the influence of the fox and are too dangerous. The council looked at Serutobi like he was crazy, while Naruto just chuckled darkly until he began laughing insanely. He then glared at Serutobi, his eyes becoming red and his pupils eye-like. Like hell it is. This power is mine and mine alone. These women are my family and you won't take them away, he said as he released wave after wave of ki. That was when Krona hugged him from behind. Calm down Naru kun she said. Naruto then actually calmed down. Sorry Krona Chan, he said. He then turned towards Serutobi. I will not have my memories and powers sealed. They are my own and only my dark release techniques might come from the Kyubi. Serutobi scowled. Then how to explain those cables that came from your back? He demanded. Naruto shrugged. Weapon blood, he said. There are more people with these abilities and the Yandaimi Hokage, Minato Namikaze, was one of them, he just never used it. He said. That brings me to my next point. Why was I never told that Minato Namikaze was my father? He asked, shocking the room. Serutobi and Jiraiya frowned. Because you would have let it go to your head and wouldn't be able to be used as a weapon. Serutobi said, seeing no point in hiding it anymore. He was then hit by the full force of Naruto's and the clan head's key, and a single cable fired from Naruto's finger impaled itself on the wood just next to his head. Listen up you pathetic old fool. He said as the mark of the third eye, slowly began appearing on his forehead. You give me everything that I should have gotten from my inheritance right now, or I'll make what I did to Orochimaru seem friendly, he said. Serutobi scowled. Then you would be charged with treason, he said smugly. He wanted to say more but was cut off by Homura, Danzo and Kaharu. No he won't, Danzo said. The boy has a bloodline that surpasses any other in this village and is the son of our hero and you want to kill him, he said. I won't allow it. The other advisors and several clan heads and even Sakuya Haruno. She was the mother of Sakura Haruno, 
but didn't see Naruto as a demon. She was also disgusted with his treatment in the village and how her daughter acted. Sarutobi scowled as he snapped his fingers. Anbu! He yelled. Restrain Uzumaki! He ordered as four Anbu charged at Naruto, before being impaled by four cables bursting from Naruto's back, before they withdrew into his body, leaving the Anbu to drop dead on the floor. Naruto then raised his hand and began charging red energy. Before he could fire it, Medusa wrapped her arms around his neck from behind. Calm down Naruto. She said softly into his ear. The energy disappeared and Naruto turned back to normal. Thank you Medusa-chan. He said, making her blush slightly. I will not be used as a weapon or a breeding factory. He said. I will take up a position as clan head for the Uzumaki and Namikaze clan, which I will merge into the Gorgon clan. He said. This will probably activate the CRA, which I will gladly accept. I already have two candidates and I am thinking about a few others. He said. Danzo, Homura and Kaharu nodded. We will continue this meeting later. For now we must find Tsunade and bring her back, Kaharu said. Why? Serutobi asked. To make her the next Hokage. Danzo said. After what we just witnessed, we have no confidence in your skills any longer. He said. Serutobi growled as everyone, except for most of the civilians, in the room agreed, making it so that he couldn't do a thing about it. He was then pushed to the ground by several Anbu. You are also under arrest for crimes against the heir of two respected clans. Take him away. Danzo said as the Anbu disappeared. And you, Jiraiya, are to get Tsunade. If she doesn't want to, tell her that her godson is still alive. If she tries to kill you, too bad. Danzo ordered. Jiraiya gulped, but nodded. Do you need me for anything else? Naruto asked. Danzo shook his head. You can go Naruto. He said. Naruto smiled. Thank you, Danzo-sama. He said with a bow, before he and his family disappeared in a swirl of blood. In the village. Naruto and his family were walking through the village. When they went around a corner, they were met by the rest of the genin and their sensei. What the hell are you doing here? Kuranai demanded. Naruto shrugged. Walking. He said in a bored tone of voice. He then tilted his head to the side as a kunai flew past him. When he looked, he saw Akiba with his arm outstretched. You do realize that I could have you executed now for attacking a clan head, right? He said. The group's eyes widened. What do you mean? Kuranai demanded. I am the head of the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans, now fused into the Gorgon clan. He said with a smirk. Kuranai glared. You're lying. She spat. Naruto shrugged. Like I care what you think. It will be revealed soon anyway when Tsunade Sama comes to the village to replace the third, he said as Asuma fumed. Why the hell is my father being replaced? He demanded. Naruto shrugged. Because he is an incompetent old fool, he said. Asuma saw red and charged at Naruto. Naruto just dodged his attacks. Is that all a Jonin can do? He mocked, before making some hand signs, before his hands were covered with chakra. Chakra scalpel. He said as he made a few slashes at Asuma, cutting the tendons in his legs, making him collapse. That was the moment several villagers decided to help Asuma and charged at Naruto, who just smirked and made a few hand signs. Wind release. Beast tearing violent wind palm. He yelled as he sent a demonic claw made from chakra at the villagers, crushing them or shredding them apart. So weak. He said with a grin. Then Kakashi decided to charge at Naruto with a chidori. Naruto just smirked. He held up his hand and created a swirling ball of chakra in his hand. Rasengan. He yelled as he slammed the ball against the Chidori, causing an explosion, sending Kakashi flying back. You really are a bunch of idiots. Naruto mocked. Kiba growled. Die. He yelled as he and the rest of the genin, even Hanada, charged. Naruto smirked and took out Emerald Snake and pointed it towards Kiba. You first. He said as he disappeared and reappeared behind Kiba. Kiba quickly jumped away as Naruto made a slash at his neck. Naruto smirked as he raised his sword. Cursed Fang Wave. He yelled as he launched a large wave of reddish black chakra. The Genin just barely dodged the destructive attack, which completely destroyed the building it came into contact with, which just happened to be Naruto's old apartment. You should just give up. If you don't, you will get hurt badly. He said with a grin. The genin looked at each other and decided he was right. Well, everyone except Sasuke, who went through the hand signs. 
fire release. Grand fireball technique. He yelled as he launched a large fireball at Naruto. Naruto smirked and made his own hand signs, with one hand. Water release. Water encampment wall. He said as water swirled around him, coming from thin air, and formed a wall against the fireball. A large cloud of steam was kicked up, before being blown away, revealing Naruto unscathed. That all? He asked, before he disappeared. He then appeared in front of Sasuke, emerald snake at his throat. Try that again and I will kill you, last Uchiha or not. The only reason you're alive now is because I don't want trouble with the council members that still support you. He said as he sealed away his sword and turned around. Later. He said as he and his family walked away. Time skip. Three weeks. Naruto was walking towards the Hokage's tower to see Tsunade. She wanted to talk about his clan and when they would reveal it. He then disappeared in a blood shunshun. At the tower. Naruto walked into the office and was greeted by a smiling Tsunade and Shizune. He was also greeted by the sight of the bloodied and broken body of Jiraiya. He smiled, before he was taken into a hug by Tsunade, which he returned. When she regained her composure, she smiled. We need to think when we will reveal your new clan, she said. Naruto shrugged. I was thinking the same time you were revealed the Hokage, he said. Tsunade nodded. Then it will be revealed in three days, she said as Naruto smiled. Good, he said as he left for his compound. Three days later, Tsunade was just announced the Hokage as Danzo walked forward. And now I introduce you to Konoha's newest clan head, Naruto Uzumaki Gorgon, head of the Gorgon clan, the combined Namikaze and Uzumaki clan, he said as Naruto walked forward. Several civilians screamed things among the lines of, the demon can't be the Yandaimi's son. They were quickly silenced by the Anbu. Naruto smirked. Then Kakashi arrived at the stage. That demon isn't my sensei's son, he yelled as he ran at Naruto with a kanai. Before he arrived however, he was restrained by several root anbu. Yes, root is on Naruto's side, since Danzo is on Naruto's side. Leave him be for now, Naruto said. If he attacks again, I will kill him myself. The root anbu nodded and disappeared. I will now return to my compound. Any questions any of you have, will have to wait until a later date. He said as he walked towards his family and they disappeared in a swirl of blood. Time skip one week. Naruto had spent the last few weeks training, finally perfecting his fire nature and learning some new moves for it in his ice and dark nature, just like Krona, who finally began developing a dust release nature and could already achieve levitation. Right now he stood on the training ground, going through hand signs, fire release, grand fire destruction. He yelled as he breathed out a stream of intense flames which incinerated every training dummy nearby, as well as a few dozen or so trees. Naruto smirked at the results. Perfect, he said. To think that Krona-chan can use the powered-up version and deal even more damage. Krona-chan really is strong, he said as a pair of arms encircled around him from behind. Thanks for the compliment, Naru Koi, Krona said. Naruto chuckled. You're welcome, Kronaheim, he said. What do you need? he asked. Lady Tsunade needs us for a mission, she said. Naruto nodded, as he suddenly appeared behind her and wrapped an arm around. Let's go, he said as they disappeared in a swirl of blood. In Tsunade's office, when Naruto and Krona arrived, they saw Tsunade stand there with a woman with long auburn colored hair. This was the Mei Terumi, leader of the rebel faction in the Hidden Mist. Let me guess, Naruto said, as the attention was shifted to him. You need help with the civil war and Tsunade-sama wants us to do so? He asked. Tsunade nodded. Why not? Naruto said with a shrug. Always wanted to see what a fellow demon host could do and Yugura is a perfect chance. He said. Mei smiled and bowed. Thank you, she said. Naruto waved it off. No need to thank me. Least I can do for a beautiful woman like you. He said, making her blush, while Krona just giggled not to mention a distant family member he said making may look at him your clan is related to the uzumaki clan right may nodded my name is naruto uzumaki namikaze gorgon head of the gorgon clan the combined uzumaki and namikaze clan may's eyes widened before they narrowed where is that old bastard serutobi she demanded i want to know where the man that told me that my fiance was dead is Naruto was shocked, until he remembered the contracts he read from his father's possessions. I knew your name was familiar, he said. 
I read it on one of the marriage contracts my father made. As for Seru Toby, he will get what is coming to him soon enough. He said, before May hugged him tightly and kissed him on the lips. Naruto didn't take long to respond and after five minutes they broke apart. Guess I have another reason to help you now. He said. Let me get Medusa and we will get going. May looked at him. Who is Medusa? She asked. Naruto smiled. My aunt. He said as he and Krona disappeared in a swirl of blood again. Time skipped to depart. Naruto, May, Krona and Medusa were walking through the village towards the gate. They then came across the rookie eleven. What are you doing here? Kakashi demanded. We have a mission, S rank. So get out of our way before I decide you're a threat and eliminate you. He said, leaking key, making them back off. The group then disappeared in several swirls of blood. At the battle, no preparation for the battle will be described, takes too much time and I just want to get to the battle. Naruto stood at the edge of a cliff near the village, Krona at his side. The battle was already raging and it was time for them to initiate their attack. Go ahead Heim, he said as Krona made hand signs. Fire release. Rain of fire. She said as the rain suddenly stopped and the sky glowed red, before fireballs began raining from the sky, exploding as they hit something, wreaking havoc on the enemy lines. The attack then stopped and the rain returned, putting out the fires. Naruto smirked as he made his own hand signs and slammed his hands on the ground. Dark release. Heartless army level 3. He said coldly as pools of darkness appeared before the enemy soldiers, before large shadow-like creatures with large antenna on their heads and what looked like knights appeared, Neo Shadow and Armored Knight Heartless from Kingdom Hearts. They then jumped at the enemy and began tearing them apart. Naruto's smirk disappeared when the Sanbi suddenly appeared on the battlefield. We go down there to help. Naruto said. But before that we need something to keep that turtle at bay. He said as he made more hand signs. Dark release. Envoy of darkness. He said as a gigantic black creature appeared, with a heart-shaped hole in his chest and vines around his face dark side heartless. The beast charged at the Sanbi and grappled with it. Naruto and Krona then jumped down with a dark smile on their faces. Ragnarok appeared in the form of a large black katana, no mouth present. Naruto unsealed Emerald Snake and they both dashed towards the army, an insane look and a dark smile on their faces as they cut apart enemy after enemy, their forms slowly getting soaked in blood using one of the cursed fang-style dances, the Dance of Blood. They suddenly stopped when the dark side was destroyed and one of the Sanbi's tails shot out towards them, hitting Krona and knocking her out. Medusa, who was fighting nearby, quickly caught her, but Naruto lost it and turned into his madness form. But instead of a mark of the third eye on his forehead and the eye marks on his palms, they were now actual eyes and his one-tailed cloak was around him, before gaining two more tails. Die. He growled as he charged at Yugura. Yugura, still in his sanbi from, turned towards him, just in time to be launched away by a powerful uppercut from Naruto. He then raised his hand, energy gathering in front of the eye, and fired a barrage of energy bolts in Yugura's direction, creating a large explosion and kicking a veil of dust. The dust was blown away by a large ball of compressed water that was launched at Naruto, who just tore through it with his claws. Yugura then began charging a bijudama. Naruto's eyes widened and his cables sprung from his back as a ball of black energy appeared in front of his open mouth. He used his tails and cables as containment helpers. Bijudama. Yugura yelled as he fired the blast as a cannon shot. Sambiko Amari. Naruto yelled as he fired an even stronger blast, that clashed with Yugura's blast. For a moment it looked like Yugura would win, before Naruto's blast tore right through it and the explosion engulfed him. Naruto walked towards the area Yugura was and found Yugura lying in a crater. I'm sorry for everything. Yugura said. Madara put me in a genjutsu to destroy every bloodline. My life will end soon, so my last wish is that you take the Sanbi into your seal. Me and Lady Sanbi were good friends and she deserves a chance. He said as Red Chakra appeared around Yugura and went into Naruto's seal. Take care of her Uzumaki and tell Mei that I'm sorry, I really am. He said with his last breath as the life faded from his eyes. Rest in peace. Naruto said as he turned back to normal and closed Yugura's eyes. He then picked up the body and disappeared in swirl of blood. With Mei and the rest. Naruto appeared with Yugura's body in his arms, shocking everyone. He was put under a genjutsu by Madara Uchiha, who is somehow still alive. This shocked them even more. I want him to have a proper funeral. 
Before you ask however, the Sanbi was transferred to my seal. He said, while Mei just smiled sadly. That would be Yagura's last wish. Before he was under the Genjutsu, Yagura was very close friends with the Sanbi. She was his only friend before he and I met in our childhood. I will see to the funeral, I hope you will be there. She said, tears forming in her eyes, while Naruto nodded. I will Mei Chan. He said as he hugged his fiance as she cried into his chest. Time skipped back to the village. Naruto, Krona and Medusa walked out of the Hokage's tower after receiving payment for their mission, which was about 500,000 Ryu each. When they walked into the marketplace, a mob of civilians was already there. We will kill you for soiling the Yandaimi's name, demon. One screamed. Yeah, and after that those bitches will come in handy. Another said, until they were all silenced by an insane amount of killing intent. They looked at Naruto whose eyes had just turned into their madness state. The Anbu present thought about what to do and decided to value their lives and to not interfere, the civilians were going to die anyway. Naruto then glared at the mob, before the clothes on his back began bubbling. They then burst apart as two large fountains of blood appeared. Crimson twin dragons, he yelled as the fountains took the forms of two large dragons and began tearing the mob to shreds. When they were done, the blood receded into Naruto's back and the wounds healed. Well, I guess we found your animal theme, Medusa said. Dragons, huh? Rare one to be sure. Until now the rarest theme was foxes with your mother, Naruto smirked. I guess it's time for training then, he said as he and his family left, but not before taking money and useful things from the corpses. That night at Naruto's compound, Naruto was standing in the middle of a forest clearing, a sword in hand. It was a sleek, medium-sized sword. The hilt's grip, which had a gentle black decorative wrapping, bent forward at the end with a pommel shaped to look overlapped three times and a crimson tassel dangling from its base. Instead of a suba, there was a U-shaped guard covering three inches of blade, with a flower petal design. At the base of the guard was a red string wrapped thrice around the hilt, with a three-loop bow on the backside and a folded paper decoration on the front side. The blade was black with a silver edge. It was straight and slim with a somewhat short size with the tip ending in a slanted razor-like edge instead of being tapered to a point. He raised it up high, with a smirk on his face. In front of him stood a shinobi who had began turning into a kishin. His smirk soon turned into a downright demonic grin as he swung his sword. Sing, Benahime, he said as crimson light illuminated the night sky. As Naruto was walking around the village, he was held up by one of Donzo's root anbu. Root was reinstated after Naruto requested a vote on it during a council meeting. Danzo-sama and Tsunade-sama have need of your presence, he said. Naruto nodded. Tell them I'll be there as soon as I get Krona, he said. The Anbu nodded and disappeared, before Naruto disappeared in a swirl of blood. Tsunade's office. Naruto and Krona appeared in a swirl of blood and saw Tsunade and Danzo standing there. Ah oh, you're here, Tsunade said. I have an A-rank mission that might escalate into an S rank, depending on the danger, hence why I send you for it. You must escort Yuki Fujikazi, the famous actress, she said. Naruto sighed. Why do I get the feeling there is something else? He said. Danzo chuckled. You're right. Due to a large part of the council still being set on showing off the Uchiha and Hiyashi on showing of his clan, Team 7, 8, together with Anko, and 9 will accompany you, he said. Doesn't Team 7 only have two genin? He asked. You were replaced with one of my root shinobi, to keep an eye on the Uchiha. His name is Sai. I also have a third member for your team. Danzo said as someone appeared in a swirl of flames. It was a girl with long black hair, black eyes and pale skin. She wore a black shirt, black pants, grey ambu armor on her arms and legs, grey boots and a grey belt with her pouches on it, two kanai holders on each leg and a ninjutsu on her back. This is Hitomi, Hitomi Uchiha, the last truly loyal Uchiha since I don't believe for one second that Sasuke is loyal, he said. Naruto's eyes widened at the name. Did you say Hitomi? He said. Danzo nodded. Hitomi looked at Naruto and her eyes widened, before she flew at him and Tackle hugged him to the ground. Naruto-kun, she yelled. Naruto smiled and hugged her back. Tsunade looked at Danzo. I thought you trained all your operatives to be completely emotionless, she said as Danzo chuckled. I only do that to those that want to. 
You would be surprised how many children want to get rid of their emotions after seeing some things. He said with a sigh. Hitomi isn't one of them. She would never forget Naruto as she was his only friend when he was a child. I saved her after a mob tried to kill her for that and trained her. She is at least high Junin level, like most of my root. He said, smiling at Hitomi and Naruto. Krona looked at Tsunade. Who will be our sensei? She asked. Tsunade smiled as another swirl of blood signaled Medusa's arrival. I'll be. She said. Naruto smiled. This team will be invincible. He said, before he turned to Tsunade. When do we need to meet for the mission? He asked. At 6 p.m. Tsunade said. Naruto nodded as the team disappeared in several swirls of blood. At the training ground. Naruto and his team were standing in the training ground. Now to see your skills. Naruto said as he gave Hitomi a card. She channeled chakra through it and the information appeared as a holographic display. This is how they are displayed, and you scroll through them like a computer. Sorry that I didn't clarify this before. Name. Hitomi Uchiha Age. 16 chakra levels. High Anbu to low cage. Chakra control. Low to mid cage ninjutsu. Expert genjutsu. Advanced. Taijutsu. Advanced Kenjutsu. Expert Chakra Natures. Abnormal Fire Nature Normal Wind Nature Abnormal Water Nature. Boil Nature Known Techniques. Shadow Clone Technique. Body Replacement Technique Transformation Technique. Fire Release. Grand Fireball Technique. Fire Release. Dragon Fire Technique. Fire Release. Phoenix Sage Fire Technique Fire Release. Running Fire. Fire Release. Roaring Flame Sphere Fire Release, Fire Dragon Flame Bullet. Fire Release. Great Dragon Fire Technique Fire Release, Mist Blaze Dance Technique. Fire Release. Intelligent Hard Work Fire Release, Screaming Inferno. Fire Release. Rain of Fire Fire Release, Exploding Flame Crater. Fire Release. Ash Pile Burning Fire Release, Phoenix Inferno. Fire Release. Dragonic Blaze Fire Release. Grand Fire Destruction. Fire Release. Grand Fire Majestic Annihilation Fire Release. Shadow Clone Technique. Wind Release. Beast Tearing Palm Wind Release. Beast Tearing Violent Wind Palm. Wind Release. Flower Scattering Dance Wind Release. Great Breakthrough. Water Release. Water Prison Technique Water Release. Gunshot. Water Release. Water Gathering Gorgon Water Release. Water Dragon Bullet Technique. Water Release. Rainstorm Technique Water Release, Water Fang Bullet. Water Release. Rising Water Slicer Water Release, Black Rain. Water Release. Water Encampment Wall Water Release, Water Dragon Whip. Water Release. Wild Water Wave Boil Release, Skilled Mist Technique. Kanai Shadow Clone Technique Flame Shunshin Mystical Palm Technique. Chakra Scalpel Poison Mist Generic Sealing Technique. Fuenjutsu Advanced Level Amaterasu Sukuyomi Suzano. Bringer of Darkness Technique Demonic Illusion. Descending Hell Technique. Demonic Illusion. False Surroundings Technique Demonic Illusion. Double False Surroundings Technique. Demonic Illusion. Hell Viewing Technique Demonic Illusion. Mirror Heaven and Earth Change. Demonic Illusion. Shackling Stakes Technique Demonic Illusion. Tree Binding Death. Genjutsu. Unknown Fire Eye Technique, Powerful Calm. Temple of Nirvana Technique Sukuyomi, Black Dream. Genjutsu. Flower Petal Escape Cloud Style Front Beheading. Cloud Style Reverse Beheading Cloud Style Flame Beheading. Cloud Style Crescent Moon Beheading Naruto looked at the list in shock, but it was mostly focused on two techniques. He then looked at Hitomi. You have the Mangekyo Sharingan? He asked. She nodded. When the mob tried to kill me, they said you were already dead and I blamed myself. I guess that that awakened it. She said. But I barely use it as it destroys my eyes. She said. Naruto nodded. Then another question. I get the fire nature, but where do the insane chakra level and the abnormal water nature and boil nature come from? He asked. My father was from Kiri and died before the Uchiha clan ever found out about him. He was a very high ranking member of the Hazuka clan. But the hydrification technique didn't get passed down to me, but the Sharingan did. The gene for the technique is dormant inside me and I can pass it down to my children. They will either get the Sharingan or the hydrification technique. And the boil nature is just the combination of my fire and water natures. Hitomi explained. Naruto nodded. Let's arm up. 
he said as they went into the armory. Time skipped to beginning of the mission. When Naruto and his team arrived they saw the others were already present. Naruto wore the clothes he wore at the Chunin exam finals, Medusa her usual outfit and Hitomi replaced the armor on her arms with two weapon launchers, a kanai launcher on the left and a double senban launcher on the right and on her back was a different ninja too. Krona's outfit was the most different. Her dress was replaced with a skirt that ended a little above the knees, a black short-sleeved shirt with a fishnet undershirt. She still wore the braces on her arms, but had gloves with a metal plate on the back. All in all, it showed off her body and curves way more than her dress. Can we begin this mission already? The less time I spend with you all the better. Naruto said as his team nodded. The rest scowled. You will show me respect. Kakashi said. I am still your superior. He said. Naruto just chuckled. If you had listened to Tsunade Sama, you would have known that I only have to take orders from Medusa, as she is our team leader. She also has overall command on this mission. So she is your superior. After that I have command and only then any of you come into play. He said as he began walking. Let's move. He said as the group left towards the harbor. Time skipped to the ice island. The filming was abruptly stopped by the chuckle coming from the ice mountain. On the top were three shinobi, wearing the snow country's chakra armor. So Kakashi Hitaki is here to guard Princess Koyuki, huh? Rogan Nader said. You two take the others, Kakashi is mine. He said as the other two nodded and dashed away, a few dozen lesser shinobi charging as well. Before Roga could charge however, he was launched off the mountain by an attack from behind. When every looked, they saw Naruto already standing there, with a dark grin on his face. This should be fun. He said as he jumped down. Meanwhile, Hitomi was fighting Mizor, who kept dodging everything she threw at him. Now, even with all her training she was slowly getting pissed. So when Mizor captured Yuki, but was thwarted by Sakura and began dashing around again, she had enough. Let's see you dodge this asshole, she yelled as she went through hand signs. Fire release. Grand fire majestic annihilation, she yelled as she launched a truly enormous torrent of flames at Mizor. Mizor, not being able to dodge this, took the full brunt of the attack, his chakra armor not nearly strong enough to withstand this level of technique and was incinerated. She then turned to the pink-haired bitch that was screeching at her for stealing her glory. Shut the hell up, Hitomi yelled, and Sakura actually did. Fubuki wasn't doing much better against Krona, who was attacking like she was possessed. The spikes from her ice grenades didn't even pierce her flesh and just broke. Screech Alpha. Krona yelled as she launched a mouth-shaped sound wave. Fubuki dodged. When the wave hit the side of the mountain an explosion rocked the island and the mountain began to crumble. Fubuki's eyes widened as she deployed her wings and left. Roga also saw this and performed one last jutsu. Ice release, one horned white whale. He yelled as giant whale of ice jumped out of the water. Lightning release. False darkness. Naruto yelled as he fired a large lightning bolt from his mouth knocking the whale of course and giving them time to escape. Back on the ship. Kakashi was standing in front of Naruto and his team. What were you thinking? He demanded. Going off to fight him on your own. You could have endangered the entire mission. Naruto just looked bored. Are you done yet? He asked. We did more than any of you could have done. We are the leaders on this mission and we decide how we do things. I could have taken those three on by myself if it would have been necessary he said as he and his team retreated to their cabin. Time skipped to the confrontation with the train. Sorry if I'm going to fast, I barely remember what the movie was like, but I needed a mission for this and it was the best option and I just want to get to the point of this chapter. As the kanai flew at the men, they were suddenly blocked by a thick wall of ice. Ice release, gates of the eternal winter. Naruto said as he walked out of the shadows. How can you use ice release? Dodo demanded. Naruto chuckled. I have an abnormal affinity towards water and wind and just combine them, he said. Koyuki, do you believe in me? He asked in a soft voice. Koyuki looked at him, tears in her eyes as he had reminded her of the time with her father when they came here. Yes, she said. You already know the treasure of the snow country is just a generator, because Hitaki screwed up with the jewel. Naruto said as Dodo seed and Naruto made hand seals. Witness true power. Ice release. Hell's avalanche. He yelled as dozens of portals opened in the sky. Then a large rumbling sound was heard and snow and ice came flowing out of the portals, creating an avalanche of immense size that rushed at Dodo. 
Dodo, Fubuki and Roga deployed their armor wings, but the rest of the train and Shinobi were engulfed. Naruto closed his eyes and began chuckling, before it turned into downright mad laughter. He then snapped open his eyes, making everyone, even Krona and the rest of the team, take a step back. His eyes were a sickly golden color with slit pupils and black sclera. In his hand was a regular katana. What happened to him? Hitomi asked. Medusa shook her head. He awakened completely. She said. His madness fused with his weapon blood, witch blood and the power of the Kyubi and Sanbi. He has become a being known as an Arankar, the worst possible thing for Lord Death as they can grow to rival him in power, she said. Conquista todo y gobiernan con puño de hierro, Naruto chanted in Spanish. Emperador infierno eterno, he yelled as a black light engulfed him. When it cleared, Naruto was clad in white bone like armor, had a black circlet with blood red rubies on his head, a black cape, and he wielded a large broad sword with a black blade with red vein like cracks and a white bone guard and a handle. He then disappeared in a static blur and appeared in front of Doto and slammed the flat of his blade on his head and sent him into the ground. He then raised his hand and charged an orb of red light. Saro, he said coldly as he fired a large beam of red energy at Fubuki, completely vaporizing her. He then charged at Roga and channeled fiery orange energy into his blade. La Hoja de la Ira, he yelled as he cut Roga in half vertically, showering the snow red with blood. Naruto then looked at Doto. You die today, he said. Not if I have anything to say about it, Doto yelled. Ice release, black dragon blizzard, he yelled as he launched an ether black dragon at Naruto. Naruto smirked as he raised his sword and swung it down, cutting the dragon in half. Everyone then looked around to see the snow melting, the generator's effect finally kicking in. Naruto smirked as he charged at Doto. Captor de la Herahia. He yelled as he grabbed Doto and Flash froze him, before throwing him to the ground, shattering the ice and killing him. And that is that. He said as he descended to the ground and dispelled his new form, looking pretty exhausted. Sorry you needed to see that Krona, Medusa, Hitomi. As for the rest of you, let this be a lesson on what happens when you piss me off. He said. Now let's get Koyuki on the throne. He said as he helped Koyuki up and they left. Time skipped to Konoha. Naruto and his team were walking through the village again. Naruto was still tired from using his newest form. They then walked to Tsunade's office. In Tsunade's office, for the last time, Kakashi, I am not going to punish Naruto for insubordination as he had higher authority than you. She said as Kakashi, Sakura, and Sasuke seethed. I demand that you punish the Dobi, Sasuke said. They then heard laughing behind them. They turned around and saw Naruto and his team. Do you actually have the nerve to demand something from Tsunade sama? Naruto asked. You should really know your place, he said. Sasuke seethed and ran at him with a chidori. Naruto smirked and blocked with a chidori of his own, shocking Kakashi. How do you know that technique? He demanded. Naruto chuckled. My father had a few scrolls with your techniques and I learned them. He said as the Chidori made a cut on his palm. Kakashi smirked. Seems it is too much for you to handle, he said smugly. Naruto laughed. I did that on purpose, idiot, he said as the blood merged with the Chidori, increasing its size, turning it blood red, and the noise now sounded like a flock of birds being tortured and killed. This is my personal one, Crimson Chidori, he said as he dispelled it. He then looked at Tsunade. I guess my payment has already been sent to my house, he said. Tsunade nodded. Naruto smiled. Tell Danzo Sama that Hitomi chan will be staying with me, he said as he and his team disappeared. That night in the Konoha outskirts, Mizuki, who had escaped with several other prisoners, was walking around the forests. When they stopped for a moment, they sensed something. Come out, whoever you are, Mizuki demanded, and Naruto walked out of the bushes, his eyes in his madness state. When Mizuki saw the whisker marks, he stumbled back a bit. Demon. He whispered. Naruto smirked as his arm was encased in red lightning, before shifting into a claw. May the gods have mercy on your souls, for I shall not. He said as he dashed at them. Crimson Chidori, Dragon Claw. He said and blood and crimson light filled the night. The end. Subscribe for more. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.